So, aside from eating my way through Taipei, seeing all the sights, drinking a load of bubble tea, and visiting all the pen stores, I was also very fortunate in that I was invited to a pen meet uh, held in the private studio of one of the largest collectors of inks in Asia, period, if, if, if not the world. Um, th thank you, thank you, Michael, for organizing that. Um, this collector had a lot of ink, shelves of it, heaps of shelves, uh, new old Western Eastern brands. Uh, so, I think one of the most uh, the, the, the two most spectacular parts were, were were all the Mont Blanc inks, new, old. I, I I don't even know how old these go to, but you you, you can see the old jars, um, all the various uh, horseshoe shaped Mont Blanc inks uh, throughout the years. Uh, I didn't even know they they made such large jars. Uh, she also had all the, not all the, but but. A large number of uh, all the window displays that, that, that they would that the boutiques used to, to put up for, for Christmas and, and other festive events uh, she had that stuff as well and, and um, well Pelican doesn't do that but 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 uh, in the past Pelican has put out a lot of uh, paraphernalia like like, like uh, some those those matchbox whatever you call them, those those toy trucks with the Pelican logo on the side, uh, so a poster or two. I mean, like e even the wrapping they use on some of those old inks it, it is just super cool. Uh, also outside, there were a bunch of other Western brands like the Atramentis, Giraban, Daimin, uh, some Graf and Faber Castell, Aurora, uh, Carandash, new and old sets of inks, obviously. And I think the ones at the top there are the LV inks. Uh, beside that, there, there was also uh, the entire bunch of KWZ inks from, I believe, Poland. And also a whole shelf of pelicans. <laughs> and all sorts of colors and colors I'd never even seen before. And then there was the inside office. It was a smaller space inside, but but it was still quite a few shelves. Mm, in one corner, uh, there were a few of the remaining Western brands that couldn't fit outside. So we're talking here. We see the the Zeitz Kruznak. That's a fairly new German brand. Um, you can also see uh, a bunch of Parkers, new and old. Oh, there's the the, the the slightly more rare sought after. I think the emeralds, the sapphires. Um, there were Parker and like Waterman have also put out a, a lot of uh, par paraphernalia throughout the years um, I believe you just saw me po pointing at the watch that they made uh, it's just basically a, a vintage watch with, with, with Parker logos all over the front um, You can see the Visconti, uh, some super old bottles, some slightly old bottles, and uh, the ones on top are, are the latest bottles that uh, Visconti is currently using. And then there were all her sailor inks. There were a lot of sailor inks. I think she has pretty much a complete collection of every single store exclusive in Japan and more. I mean, Sailor pretty much makes exclusive inks for a lot of stores all around Japan. You could make a trip out of traveling from north to south, all the way from like Hokkaido, all the way down to Okinawa, and you would be able to buy over a hundred different bottles of ink. I mean, some stores like Bung Box, uh, they have, I think, around 30 to 36 different colors alone, some of which are seasonal. <laughs> you can only buy them during certain months. Mm. Places like uh, Kobe Nagasawa, they have 50, counting now up to 60 plus inks. And the other places have anywhere between like two to 10 inks per, per store. 
so, so there are a lot of inks. If you're going to collect them all, it is an enormous, long journey. Uh, and in other cases, it, it might just be, oh, hey, um, we're at the department store, we're opening, we commissioned maybe 100 or 200 bottles, and, and then they come and go, and, and, and hardly anyone knows about it. <laughs> and, and, and so there's really nothing you can do about those. So, so, so as a vocation, I really do not suggest you go into like, oh, I want to collect all of Sailor's Colors, because I, I don't think it's physically possible. But um, this collector definitely comes close. While we're here, we might as well show off some of the more, um, some of the stuff that you guys might be more interested in, like, like all these lovely old style bung box inks in, in, in the original octagonal bottles because they, before they switched to, uh, the, the more common round bottles that Sailor uses, um, you can see the Kyoto inks from, uh, stationery shop TAG. Uh, they have the Kyo Iro set and the Kyo no Oto set. There's also Pen and Message. Uh, they are one shop, one tiny shop in the quiet area of Kobe, uh, and they have eight colors. I mean, I mean, thankfully, some of these places do offer online shipping, uh, so some people can get them. But a lot of the time, and a lot of these inks. They're pretty much, nope, we don't sell online, you have to come to our shop and get them. Uh, you also see some old brands that no longer exist anymore. <laughs> uh, these like very quiet parts of, of, of Japanese ink in industry that, that you never get to hear about. That was incredible to see. Uh, there's also uh, there's also a whole bunch of Taiwanese inks. Um, Taiwan is an incredibly creative place. And, I mean, w w when I met up with um, some different groups of pen collectors, uh, they have a lot of small groups of people just, just, just doing a whole bunch of, of stuff with fountain pens, like, like, like customizing them, uh, um, uh, trying to flame their own dip nibs to make them even softer. Uh, making their own, like ink cleaning, pen cleaning equipment, uh, and and also making their own ink. Uh, the the reason why you don't get to hear about this in, in the West much is because the production numbers and quantities are so small, and there's already a sufficiently large market on on like this one island, that they they they've had no need to 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 expand beyond beyond their borders. Um, so, so that was very eye-opening. It was just like, like, oh, oh, this they they make ink, they make ink. Oh, here's another set of inks. So on and so forth. Uh, Taipei also has a branch of Kakimori, which is a very special shop where you can create your own custom notebook, and also uh, your own custom ink when when they have enough supplies of the raw material, um, and and. and so, so you get to like choose your own paper, front, back, design, style, lining, everything, and, and they make it for you the spot, and you can stamp your own name on it. Um, they also put out limited edition inks now and again, 60 sets. <laughs> so obviously this collector has one or two sets already. In other words, yes, yeah, so obviously you, you, you have to have at least three copies, one to archive, one to trade, and one to use. She also had a collection of inkwells, uh, vintage inkwells, and, and also she designed quite a few of her own, like, like all the metal work ar around an actual old glass inkwell. Mm. And of course, she had quite a few pens, in fact, some very pretty pens. Um, here, here we can see her, her small tray of, of Nakaya pens. Uh, she was also very into uh, Suzutake, which is uh, where you take 
the really hard parts of bamboo. It's sort of like wood barrel, but, but for like bamboo. And you can convert them into very organic looking pens. I mean, Sailor makes a few of their own as well, but obviously you can also, um, there, there, there are quite a few custom pen makers in Taiwan, um, at least three or four, uh, many of which also serve their own market, and the most famous of which is Fine Writing International, uh, run by, I believe, uh, a Mr. Lee, and uh, they do a lot of custom work as well. Um, I believe they recently had an exhibition and uh, they, they had a whole bunch of different ebonites uh, like hard rubbers, uh, urushi, different urushi techniques, um, some, some makie as well, uh, a, a lot of very fancy, very fancy carved wood bodies um, and, and other stuff. I mean, the reason why you don't hear much about these is because their own domestic market is massive. They, they have a lot of pen users. Uh, during the annual Pelican Hubs, the, the top two most signed up places are both in Taiwan. <laughs> uh, like over 100 to 200 participants uh, like per area of Taiwan. So they've never really had to uh, expand much as it were. And hopefully over the next year or so, I, I hope to be able to learn a lot more about this a very distinct pen culture in East Asia, and then I'll get to share it with you all. And so I hope you enjoy this video and seeing all these, this insane collection of inks. Uh, it was an incredible experience for me. I'd like to thank Mr. Chen, uh, Miss Lai, um, I'd like to thank Wei. And I'd like to thank all the other uh, pen people in Taiwan who, who, who came out to see me. Uh, thanks for letting me join your pen meets. And this concludes the first half of our trip. Next up, Japan! Japan.